couple of things about the league meetings that are one of the reasons to me why I find them really, really valuable. So a few years ago, I don't know, 10, 12 years ago, I started to get an invitation every Tuesday night at the league meetings uh, to a dinner that was hosted by the Pittsburgh Steelers. And I covered Dan Rooney for a long time. He was one of those guys who, if I ever wanted to really take the temperature of how the league, the owners, the, uh, the commissioner felt about an issue, this is going back to Paul Tagliabue, I'd always reach out to Dan Rooney. And so we, I got in, started to get invited to this dinner every year that the Steelers do. And so Tuesday night, there was uh, a dinner, obviously, at the uh, at a Italian restaurant in Phoenix called Tommaso's. Uh, it's an old time Italian. Uh, and so gathered in this room and I notice way across the restaurant, there's another party there. It's the New York Giants dinner party. There's 25 people or so. Brian Dable, John Mara, uh, Joe Shane, the general manager, a lot of, you know, the entire Giants delegation is their wives. And so, you know, interesting. And I see John Mara. And the reason why I'm going to bring up John Mara is because something kind of uncharacteristic happened at these meetings. You don't often get uh, what I would call legitimate tension at the meetings, but I'm going to explain to you a rule that was considered in Phoenix here at the meetings that did not pass. And it surprised me it did not pass because at the reception, NFL reception on Monday night, I talked to quite a few people who thought that the league was going to be able to get this uh, movement that they had, this agenda item passed that they would be able to flex one or two Mon uh, Thursday night games and take a game from Sunday and put it on Thursday night, you know, part of flex scheduling. As of now, obviously, uh, NBC is uh, able during certain weeks of the year to flex games uh, into Sunday night games. If their Sunday night matchup stinks, uh, they they flex these games into them. And now for the first time this year, ESPN is also going to be allowed to do that for Monday night games, which when you think about it, I mean, I guess it's fair, but you're asking somebody who's got a ticket to a one o'clock Sunday game to now go to a Monday night game. And obviously the logistics, the travel, that could be a problem. But last week, we all heard about it when Sports Business Journal wrote a story that said the owners are going to be asked to vote at the league meetings to approve flex scheduling for Thursday night games. And my first reaction was, this is stupid. And I ran into a, an NFL executive who asked me Sunday, as soon as I arrived, or shortly after I arrived, what do you think of this? And I said, it's a dumb idea. And he was taken aback. I said, why? Don't you want to see the best games? I said, do you understand moving a game three days in the middle of the season? Obviously, you're going to be moving a game that has playoff implications, period. You wouldn't be moving a crap game into a Thursday night space. You're going to move a game with playoff implications. And maybe it's the second game this team has played this year on a short week Thursday night. And understand when people ask about, well, you know, it's inconvenient, yeah, but what's the problem? If you have a Thursday night game, you don't practice. You know, I think it was Josh McDaniels at the meeting said, you, you have to understand what it what in, is entailed with a Thursday night game. On Thursday night, you have two walkthroughs that week during the week. And otherwise, your guys are just in meetings and getting treatment, trying to get their bodies ready to play a game. And so anyway, I thought it was a dumb idea, but it was one of those things 
that if you understand the way the league works, Roger Goodell really wanted this to happen. Mm -hmm. And he wanted this to happen because the Amazon people wanted a boost. And they wanted to make sure that in week 14, they don't have Atlanta, Carolina. Or, and I'm inventing that, or, you know, Houston, Chicago, or, or whatever. They they want to give have some insurance against a bad game in week 14 or 15. I understand it, but I don't think it's a good idea at all. But anyway, so that's the backdrop. And in the meeting on Tuesday afternoon, Roger Goodell got significant pushback on flex scheduling. John Mara, a co-owner of the Giants, spoke up about it. Uh, Art Rooney, who hosted this dinner on Tuesday night, sitting at a table with Roger Goodell, he opposed it. And so now I'll get to this dinner. So there's, I don't know, maybe 40 people at four big tables in this room, 35, 40 people in this Steelers dinner. And way across the way, the Giants dinner ends. And they come in to say hello to everybody. So I go over to John Mara and I shake his hand and I said, I really like what you said, <laughs> you know, today. <laughs> and let me read you John Mara's quote. Here's oh, yeah. his quote. Quote, at some point, can we please give some consideration to the people who are coming to our games? People make plans to go to these games weeks and months in advance and 15 days ahead of time to say, sorry, folks, that game you were planning on taking your kids to Sunday at one. Now it's Thursday night. What are we thinking about? This should have been vetted with the health and safety committee. It should have been vetted with the competition committee. And it was not. They just tried to push it through. So he was ticked off. And so I shook John Mara's hands and he looked at me and he goes, I, I, I need to get out of here because he was eight feet away from Roger Goodell. Not that in any way that they would, you know, start a wrestling match, verbal or physical, <laughs> right there in the middle of Tommaso's, uh, this lovely Italian restaurant in Phoenix. But you could just tell that John Mayer was uncomfortable. He was uncomfortable, but unmoved and absolutely strident that it is a dumb idea. And I do think it's a dumb idea. And I talked to Goodell briefly about this. And he still thinks it has a chance of happening. And I believe you're going to see it resurface as a very hot button topic at the May meetings when the NFL meets for just, it's really like a day or a day and a half meeting. Uh, and I think the two big topics of that meeting are going to be the sale of the Washington commanders and, of all silly little things, flex scheduling. You know, first of all, you could probably write another verse for Billy Joel scenes from an Italian restaurant with that <laughs> story. That's, that was really good, man. Uh, second of all, the the press conference that Roger Goodell had um, after John Mara had said what he said that you just read, and one part of it that you didn't read was that he said that this is abusive to fans. Yes, and that's so right. Yeah. that part of the quote was read to Roger Goodell at his press conference um, just after that happened. And Goodell said basically like, yes, we have fans who attend games, but we also have millions of fans who watch games, which I thought was just the perfect amalgamation of what he thinks of that. Like, yeah, you know, people are gonna go to the games. Like people are gonna figure out a way to either be at the game or not be at the game. And you know, the money is gonna be there. It's what it is, right? But they want to get the eyeballs on the games. They want to get as many eyeballs as possible on the yeah. games. And that is the overriding point there. And I tend to agree with Mara that this is not a great idea. I think logistically, it's an absolute nightmare for teams. It's a it nightmare is. for coaches yeah. who basically you know, plan every single day of the season before the season starts. All right, so even when it's a flex and it goes from one o'clock on a Sunday to eight o'clock on a Sunday Eastern, that that is a significant shift in some things in the schedule because that's just the way it is. But there is already a plan basically for the way things are supposed to go throughout the season once the schedule gets released. Now, if you take a game from a Sunday and put it on a Thursday, or even if you take a game from a Sunday and put it on a Monday, that's a significant shift in and of itself. 
But going from a Sunday to a Thursday when you weren't expecting that toward the end of the year, that's a huge, huge shift. And also, I think for players, you know, when guys go from a Sunday game to a Thursday game, things are dramatically different from the time the game ends on a Sunday until they start playing on a Thursday. Usually, game ends on Sunday. You know, you do your shower, you do your media obligation, and then you leave, you spend time with your family. It's kind of low-key, right? When guys are playing on a Thursday and they finish a Sunday game, they bring in massage tables into the locker room, and they start working on guys so that they can recover as quickly as possible. It changes things significantly. So I agree that it should have been vetted with the health and safety committee. It should have been gone. It should have gone through the competition committee. There's so many different elements of this that are not, hey, we need more eyeballs on Thursday night football that I don't think are being considered here. And yeah. so I, yeah, that, that's, it's, a, it, it, it's very interesting. Excellent, excellent point. Uh, I think I remember last year, I did a piece of my column about Austin Eckler preparing for a Thursday night game. And particularly in this particular case, it was a Thursday night game that was halfway across the country in Kansas City. And I'll never forget one of the things he he said to me was on Sunday night after the game they had just finished, as you described very, very well, he was getting worked on until nine or 10 o'clock at night after uh, a 1 p.m. game. And that is the kind of stuff you try to put Humpty Dumpty back together again in a very short period of time. Uh, and I totally agree with Patrick Mahomes face palm emoji. Mm-hmm. when You know, he, he responded to a tweet about now it's going to be, you know, acceptable, legal, whatever the word is permissible to schedule two teams for short week Thursday games. But you know what? Two things. It's all about the fans. And we, our first priority is health and safety. Yeah. Stop, 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 stop. And by the way, stop. (laughs) Anyway. Hi, I'm Mike Tirico, and thanks for watching. Make sure to hit subscribe for the latest news and highlights from NBC Sports.